So uh, here we continue with chapter number four, e-commerce. And uh, in this uh, slide where we stopped last class says the eight most important factors in uh, successful e-commerce site design. So uh, the idea here is, uh, uh, the idea, uh, these factors that will make your website successful. Number one, you need to have functionality, right? which is what functions your website has. So for example, in our WordPress uh, project, uh, you know, the functionality, pages that work, how quickly it uh, loads, uh, does it point to the customer towards what the product they're offering, do you see? Uh, how is the functions are working? Number two is the information. Uh, what information, what links available so people can discover you and your products? Easy views. You want a website that is easy to use. You don't want a website that is uh, difficult to use. Uh, the number uh, four, we've got this redundant navigation. Available navigation to the same content. So sometimes you see on the top, you've got the links. On the bottom, you also have the links again. Sometimes if the links are pictures, you want to make another links that are text, so it's easy. Ease of purchase. You want, you know, remember we talked about this one uh, click uh, you know, purchase to make it easy, you know, one or two clicks to purchase. Uh, multiple browser functionality, site works with the most popular browsers. Remember, you know, one of the things about, uh, you know, websites now is that some people, they view their websites on the PC, some people on a laptop, smaller screen, some people will use it on a mobile phone, on a tablet. So maybe you want to make sure that your uh, site so will work on these. And not just the platforms, also it works on the, because you know, Fire, Firefox or uh, Internet Explorer. And you want also simple graphics. You don't want to have distracting or music that users cannot control. At least if you have music, people can stop it if they want. And you want it to be legible text. Don't use some special, fancy, distorted text. Uh, tools for uh, interactivity and active content. Uh, these are some tools. These are like software uh, that is used to make your website up and running. And uh, are you guys familiar with these? Which one of these you're not familiar with? Cold Fusion, it's a software. I think it's now owned by Adobe. Uh, so they make uh, websites interactive. Personalization tools, uh, you want to have some personalization. Ability to treat people based on their personal qualities and prior history with the site. So the ability that people can log in and then once you're logged in, then the information you will see will depend on your profile or your preference. Idea of customization, where ability to change the product will better fit the needs of the customer. You know, if you go to websites, you know, it will tell you what books. Uh, if you go to Amazon, it will tell you what books you will be more likely to like. If you go to a music site, it will tell you the type of music that you probably would like based on the previous music you have listened to. And cookies is a primary method to achieve personalization. So how do they do personalization? Through cookies. Do you guys know what's a cookie? Yeah. Small file on your computer and basically tells the browser who you are. Uh, privacy uh, policy, uh, you know, maybe you want to set your privacy policy. You set the public statement declaring how site will treat customer personal information that is gathered by the site. And the European Union lately, they require any website to make their a, 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 a statement on the top of the site saying, do you agree to our uh, policy? You have to click yes. If you notice some of the websites, they always have this on the top. As you know, in accordance with the European Union uh, latest regulations, and, uh, and and in this, you may say, for example, we will take your personal information, we will sell it. They may say we will protect it, we will not use it, we will only use it if we will share it with our mother company, sister company, daughter company, uh, and accessibility rules, a set of design objectives that will ensure disabled users can effectively access uh, sites. Some websites, they are accessible, which means, uh, you know, if people who can't hear uh, or people who can't see, they, they've got some options that can help them with that. Uh, so that's accessibility rules. 
uh, designing for accessibility is this becoming more popular you know why might some merchants be reluctant to make their website accessible for disabled Americans why do you think some companies they make it accessible or you don't make it accessible yeah they are customers so sometimes you know you get more customers yeah they're intelligent okay some of them they are you know they're good customers so you make your website accessible make sure you have a text remember some of the computers they can actually read the text mm -hmm. so don't put graphics that is it cannot be read by this software uh, you want to make sure that uh, you know it's uh, you know people who have uh, you know impaired visual uh, visually impaired they can uh, actually listen if they've got the software uh, sometimes did you see those uh, kapachka where you know, they make sure you, know, you can actually yeah. listen uh, how can websites be made more accessible you know make it more text less graphics should all websites be required by law to provide equivalent alternatives for visual and sound content what do you think do you think the regulations they should make it accessible people who can't see they should be able to uh, to read the entire website remember if you have a picture sometimes there's if you put the mouse on the picture it will show a small text which basically explain what the text is or what the picture is at least they can read the caption attached to it okay you want to make sure your website people you know if they uh, you know they can if they you know if they're using uh, you know they don't have to use the mouse because the mouse required that you see so maybe you want to make sure that your website you can use the keyboard to navigate and it's easy uh, what additional accessibility problems do mobile devices pose what about using the mobile phone there's a lot of discussion uh, recently on how can we make the mobile phone uh, be used while you're driving this way, uh, you need to be able to search using voice, and then uh, if you search with your voice, then you will start to get the results, you know, through your ears because you're driving. Sometimes it's not necessarily that you can't see; rather, you want to make sure it's available through people uh, who are using your mobile site or your website in an application where uh, you don't have to see or you can't see. Let's say you're working, you're driving and uh, it says here what additional accessibility problems do okay uh, developing mobile uh, websites building mobile applications three types of m-commerce software mobile websites mobile web apps uh, native apps uh, planning and building mobile presence uh, use system analysis designed to identify using specific business objectives uh, what do you guys think? What would be a good mobile application we can uh, do for our uh, uh, website project? It's the same website, yeah, just put it on a mobile. Okay. What are some of the unique features of apps or mobile apps that is different than a website? So it depends on the functionality. Maybe there's some nothing, functionality. No, See, so with a mobile phone, you know, you can identify your location. So that's a location-based services you can add. What else? Maybe mobile uh, sites people have it all the time, so you can have those notifications. Uh, mobile sites, they, uh, you know, people can use them on their convenience. So you can have a, a possibility of you know people download information or work on it offline or. Uh, have it available whenever they have time. They can read later if they want. <coughs> so, uh, you know, on your mobile, you know, there are some maybe other uh, functionality that can also help. Sir, can I have this call? Go. Uh, it says here unique features that must be taken into account when designing a mobile uh, web presence. Well, I consider your hardware. You know, mobile uh, hardware is small, and therefore the re uh, more resources constraints in data storage and processing power. So there's a difference between using a computer for your application than using it for 
uh, mobile phone. The idea of connectivity in mobile phone is constrained by slower connection speed than the desktop or normal. Display, you've got much smaller, unique, small size website. Uh, not good in sunlight, so you want to make sure that you have good contrast and lights. And interf uh, interface, you know, touch screen technology produces no interaction. Uh, routines differ from the traditional mouse and keyboard. Mobile platform is not a good data entry tool, but can be a good navigational tool. So maybe if you're doing your website for mobile, you don't want to have a lot of data entry, but other people can cho choose. Uh, that makes it uh, more efficient. And developing a web, mobile web presence, it says platform constraints, smartphone, tablets. So you need to design considering a smartphone or a tablet. If you see now there are some software that help you build mobile applications, then you need to make sure your website, how it will look on a tab, on a Samsung, on a Lenovo, on, a, on all of those types. And then if you, if you use this, uh, you know, how does it work on a, on a Galaxy 4, 5, 7, on a note, one, two, seven, six, you see, each one has its own different size, so how will that work? Uh, and then you want to check your performance and cost. The mobile sites that are least expensive. If you do a mobile app, it can utilize browser APIs. Do you know what's a browser API? Uh, mobile, you have a mobile application, but it got some APIs. APIs is a way to interface so you can actually uh, go to your website and bring the data from there. And there's a native app, uh, you know, that's if you make an application from scratch, make a game that never existed. Very expensive, require more programming. Uh, let's see. Uh, that's the end of this chapter. Any questions on chapter four?